Okay, what we're going to do tonight here is we're going to lay out a, uh, a cutting board. It's the VCAR inlay cutting board. We're in VCAR Pro version 10. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to open a new file. Yeah, I got some maple glued up here. It's a little over 20 inches wide, so we'll make this 20. And it's about 12 and uh, 12 and three quarters. 12 and a half. Let's go 12 and a half. And it's an inch thick. Okay. Um, we'll go double sided because I put a keyhole in the back. And uh, we're going to Z zero off the surface. Uh, I always use datum center. Some guys like datum off the edge, corner, whatever. That's whatever you prefer, but uh, that's the way I do it. We're going to click OK to get started. So we need a vector on the outer edge for the outside cut. Uh, we're going to anchor point is zero, x, y, zero. We're going to radius two inches. I think it'd be good. 19 wide by 11. Yeah, that'll work. 11 and three quarters high. So we're going to create a vector. On one corner here, we're going to make a little bit of a spout because we're going to put um, flutes around the outer edge and into a little bit of a trough or a tray here to catch the liquids because you want to save them liquids for gravy. Because if you make turkey or roast or whatever and you don't make gravy, we got to run you up the flagpole by your ankles and yeah, so not good. So I want another vector with a one inch radius here. So we'll just create a second vector, same size with a one inch radius. And we'll create that. Now we have a double vector here. We're not going to worry about that right now. We'll go into node editing in a bit. We'll take care of that. For the flutes that are gonna, we're gonna have shallow here and then get deeper down to this little uh, tray area. So I wanna put a vector here. So we're gonna go, we're gonna select this vector, the two inch radius. We're gonna uh, offset it inwards one inch. We're going to offset. Oh, that was point 0.1, sorry. Let's just control Z that. Uh, we're going to go one inch. There we go. Offset that. And then uh, where this little uh, tray on the end is, we want to be a little bit bigger because we're going to use a half inch ball nose to create these. And then we're going to use the same ball nose and end mill to make the little tray here. So for the, between the size of the flute and the, the pocket we're going to cut out, we want a quarter inch because uh, half the diameter of our half inch ball nose. And it'll come clear here later when we run our tool baths. Anyway, so we're going to offset inward again at 0.75, three quarters of an inch. We're gonna offset. Okay, so now we got our main vectors. We're gonna close this out. We're gonna select this outer vector. We're gonna get rid of what we don't need here. We don't need most of this outer vector. I only wanna save this corner. We're gonna go into node editing. Now where are these vectors joined? We're going to hover our cursor just above that and we're going to hit C. That cut that vector there. Now we're going to do the same here. You can hit C as your shortcut or you can just simply right click. Go down to cut vector. And it's done. Now we have our short little vector here. And the balancer, we'll go into selection mode. You can see it's highlighted. 
we don't want the rest of that. So we can just go ahead and hit the delete key and it's gone. Now this portion of the radius on the two inch radius, we don't need that either. So we're going to go back to node edit. At this point, we're going to cut it, hit the C key, hover our cursor over it, hit the C key. You see it turns green. That's the beginning of the, the node. You can do the same here. Go back to selection. Select this curve. Hit the delete key. It's gone. We'll zoom in here. You can see we've got some spaces here. In node edit, we can simply grab this, pull it down a bit, touch. We can do the same here, either either side. You can extend a straight vector without a problem. Just grab it, pull it out, and it's done. Now we have our selected vector, which is the majority of it. We'll hit our F key here, center it all. Our order vector is selected, but this part isn't. So we're going to hit our Shift key, select that as well. We're going to go in here to join open vectors. And here it says we have two open vectors. When we close it, we'll have one. So we'll hit join here, close this. Now when we select, we have one continuous vector that we can machine. Now these vectors, we want to draw a line here because we want to pocket out a little bit of a tray to catch the liquids. So we're going to go here to our draw line, polyline. We're going to go Maybe about this big should be good. Draw a line over to the, so they're both on the, the outer vector. We're gonna hit our space bar. And we're done. Now we're gonna go in here to the uh, interactive trim mode, the little scissors. And the outer vector on this part, we don't need it. So we're gonna trim that off, get rid of it. And here on the inner vector, we have our little tray here. We can pocket out. And when we do our flutes, when we're done, it'll match up perfect here. But we have a little bit of an issue because when our tool ends here, we're going to have a little bit of a radius. And it'll leave a divot here and here. So in node editing mode, went back here into node editing. We're going to select this. And there again, we're just going to lengthen this vector. Uh, go 0 0.3. 0 0.3 of an inch on both sides. There we go. So now both of these vectors, when we flute this, it will come past where the other tool turns and it will be a seamless joint. Now the other thing we want to do in node editing mode, we want our shallow end of our flute here and it will taper down here. It will be a half inch deep here. I think 0.1 inches here is enough. So again, we're going to cut. You can also hit the C, uh, C key. Now we have two separate vectors. Now we have our start point here, the green. Our start point here is the green. When you start a flute, the shallow portion will be the start. So we'll go up here. Hover our cursor over there, right click, make start point. It's green. Same with this vector. We'll hover our cursor over there, right click, make start point. Now our flute will be shallow here and deep here. And when we get into toolpath, 
and we'll preview that. It'll be quite clear. Okay, so uh, now that we got our vectors for our the outside, our little tray, and our flutes, we're going to import our V-carve vectors, which we're going to import a bitmap, a picture. So we got this turkey. And we're going to put this turkey on our cutting board. Uh, where's our turkey? Here he is. We're going to open that file. And we're going to select this file. Oh, sorry, we've got to go to selection mode. Select this file. Double click it. And we're going to expand it a bit. Make them a little bigger so we can see what we're doing. Okay, now with this file is still selected, you can see the border. We're going to go over here to this, I think it's a bird image or something. And it's a trace bitmap tool. We're going to go into this page. And it's already selected black and white. This is black and white. That works perfect. We're going to, uh, we're going to go ahead and leave this at 50% and give it a try. And you can preview it. If you don't like it, you can change a few things. It looks good. So we'll do that. We'll preview this. And as you can see, we have vectors now. So then we're going to apply. Close. Now this bitmap, the picture part, we don't need no more. So we're just going to go ahead, right click and delete them. Leaves us with our vector. Uh, we can make them a little bit bigger. We can select him, double click it. And we'll make them just a little bit bigger. That'll do. We're going to grab them here, move them up to the center line, a little bit left. So we have about the same space on both sides between our flute and our little tray. And if you want to really get technical, you can measure it, but I think that looks pretty good there. That looks all right. So we're going to go back to selection mode. Now we need to save this image for the inlay portion. We're going to right click and copy. For the moment, we're just going to save this because we're going to transfer our copied image to another file. Save this file. We're going to call this Turkey. cutting board. Well, what's going on here? Okay, we're going to save this file. We'll come back to it in a few minutes, in a minute here. And when it's done saving down here, it'll close out. There we go. So we're going to create another new file. For our inlay, we don't need this much. We'll go about eight inches square. And we'll go half an inch thick, 0.5. There we go. Same deal, single sided though. Uh, Thickness half an inch, Z0 from the material surface center. Let's get going here. We'll paste our copied image. And here's our turkey. Now, it's very important that we got to remember, because this will be inverted. So we got to reverse this. So we're going to go here into mirror selected objects uh, we don't need to create a copy we're going to flip it about center 
horizontal. So I'll hit that. There's our turkey facing to the left. If you remember, the turkey on the board is facing to the right. Next thing we need is a vector around the outside so we can do a raised image v-carve. So the image is still selected. We're going to go into this tool. It's called ungrouping. We'll select this and ungroup the vectors. Select the very outside vector. We'll offset this vector. This time we're going to offset it outward. Now we're on three quarter. That's fine because we need we need this outer vector to so the V carve tool knows to carve the outside and leave a raised image. So we'll close this out. We're going to select all of our vectors. Oh, we've got to select them all. It's easier to go Control A. That way we know we have them all. Now all of them but the outside. We want to regroup our turkey because we want it to stay the same size as it's been. We're going to use this tool, group selected vectors. And we're back to uh, a grouped uh, object again. We're ready to switch over here to tool paths. We're in v -carve. Now we want 1.1 inches of this raised image to insert into the V carve on our board. So we're going to have a start depth of 0.1. And that will lower the start point so it'll fit into the, uh, the V carve on the board. And we're going to have a flat surface of 0.1. What this will do, oh, sorry, 0.1. We'll have 0.1 inches in the V-carve on the board and 0.1 inches gap between the board surface and this waste. This will be uh, planed off in a planer after we're done. I, uh, I got a little thickness planer there. We'll run this through after the glue up is done and set up. So we're going to V-carve this. Because we want a raised image, we need to select this outer vector as well. Hold our shift key down and select it with the other. Uh, we're already having here a 60 degree um, V-bit half an inch that's fine and uh, we can go in and look at our settings here it all looks fine 60 degree angle diameter half inch 16,000 now we're going to use a clearance tool because we got to clear out all well, there's a lot of material to clear out here all around the outside so I think one eighth ball no or not ball nose, uh, one eighth end mill will be fine. So we got a half inch, sixty degree V, a one eighth end mill. We'll go down, calculate this, and we'll preview it and see what we got. So we'll preview all tool paths. There we have a raised image of our turkey. But we want to get rid of this outside. Now you can cut this with a bandsaw if you like, however you like, but we have a perfectly good CNC. So let's use it. We're going to go in here, profile toolpath, go back to 2D. This is why we didn't group this with the turkey. We're going to select the outer toolpath only. Uh, we're going to use uh, our pieces a half inch thick. So we're going to have a cut depth of 0.5. We'll use a quarter inch mill here, mill end.
Uh, now here, if you remember from our 3D image, we have this chamfer here. So we are going to cut on the inside of the vector and that'll take care of that. We'll get rid of that. And we'll still have enough material left here. So we will, with our quarter inch, we're gonna cut inside half an inch deep. We'll go ahead and calculate this. We'll hit reset preview. When you're done a tool path, it's always a good idea to preview all tool paths. Because what you get here is what you're gonna get on your machine. And there we have, we'll double click on this and this, we have a raised image of Mr. Turkey. Or Miss Turkey, whatever, I don't know what the heck. And this is ready to go to, um, to be saved. We'll save it later. This is ready to be saved to the tool pass. But for now, we'll just close this and we'll go back to our cutting board. So we're going to save this. Turkey inlay. Okay. Save that file. When it's done saving here, it'll close. Now we'll open an existing file, we'll open our turkey cutting board. Okay, we pretty much have all our vectors except for one. We're going to have a little spout here. So we're going to go in here to the polyline tool. We're going to find, see how it, it uh, snaps to uh, the 45 degree angle here. We're going to go just about to the edge. Okay, we're going to hit our space bar. We're going to close that. Now we want to make sure our vector starts up here. So we're going to go back into our edit mode, or node edit mode. Click on this, and sure as heck, our start is down here. We want our green little box up here. So we're going to right click, make start point. Okay, looks like everything else is ready to go. Got our start point here and here. Our turkey's good to go. Let's go back into selection mode. And we'll go to toolpaths. Okay, well, let's pocket this out first. We're going to go to our pocket tool path. We're going to have a cut depth of a half an inch. Uh, we're going to use a ball nose half inch tool. We are going to use a large clearance tool. Oh, it's already selected a half inch. That's good. And we're going to go ahead and calculate this tool path. So let's go ahead and preview this. Oh, we got a preview all. There we go. And there we have our pocket for our liquids. Or juice, whatever the heck you want to call. Now we'll go ahead, we're going to select these two vectors and then close this page out. We're going to use this tool called the fluting tool path. Okay, so we want to start at this end, let's say 0.1 inches. 0.1 
and we want to end up at a half inch deep. So 0.1, we want this to be 0.4 because it's added up as it's added together when it cuts. We're going to ramp over the complete uh, length. So it'll start at 0.1 inches here. It'll taper down to 0.5. Calculate this. Preview. There you go. And as you can see now, it's shallow here, gets deeper as it goes down here. Because the flutes are cut on the center line of the vector, it matches up flawlessly with our pocket vector being offset by a quarter of an inch. We're going to go back to 2D now. We've got this other vector. We want to cut a little slot in there, a flute, for uh, a spout. So let's make it a little easier to pour liquids out. So we're going to close this. Go back into our flute and tool path. This time we do want to start at the surface and we want it to go half an inch deep. 0.5. Same thing. Fluting to calculate. Preview. And as you can see, you got a little bit of a spout. So we'll go back into 2D. Now we'll create a tool path for our recessed image of our V-car to match our raised image in our uh, inlay. We're going to close this, go into V-car. We're going to select our turkey. Now here, we want to start depth of zero. We want to start at the surface. But we want a flat depth. We Our, our inlay is 0.1 inches. We want to go a little deeper than that. But not much. We don't have to go very much deeper. Let's go 0.11. So that's 0 0.01 deeper than our uh, raised image. So we have a clearance tool selected. We have the same V-bit. It's very important that you use the same tool for your uh, recessed image as you, your raised image. Very important that you stay the same. Okay, everything else looks fine. B carve one, calculate. Okay, let's preview. Now let's hit reset. Preview all. All right, so we have a reversed image. If we remember, our inlay image was facing right. This guy's facing, or sorry, it was, he was facing left. This one is facing right. Now, when that's turned over, it'll lay right in here perfectly. And there's a little bit of a trick to cutting this. Because we're going to run this through a thickness planer, when we cut this out on the, uh, on the CNC, I'll give you a little tip that helps make it look good. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead now and cut it out. So we're gonna select the outer vector. We're gonna select our profile toolpath. I usually cut out the outside with a one eighth. So we're gonna go right back here. We're gonna select our one eighth. I have a a uh, nice compression bit. Select that. Our board is one inch thick. So we're going to select one inch, one eighth end mill, but we're going to cut outside. Um, everything else looks good. Profile. We're going to calculate. 
Okay, and once again, we want to preview all two paths. Okay. Double click on the outer edge. You see now we have a little spout, a little less of a radius for our spout. Now, for display purposes, storage purposes, you never know. We'll go to the back. We're going to go back to the drawing page. We're going to go to the image. We'll put a keyhole here. It only takes a minute and it's simple. So we're going to uh, go to our polyline tool. Just a little bit of a tool here, a little bit of a line here. That's all it needs. Get our spacer bar. Close this. Select this line. Gadgets. You want to get, there are other gadgets available, but this keyhole toolpath is a wonderful toolpath uh, gadget. Depth of our slot is 0.3 inches, half an inch high. Don't need to be that terribly big. It's a vertical keyhole. And we're going to hit OK. And we have a tool path for a keyhole with a keyhole bit on your uh, router. So now. We can go over here. I'm going to put in my USB stick now. We're going to save these to the USB because the Laguna IQ runs off USB file. So this is going to pop up. We're going to hit Control A to select it all, delete, enter to the degree. It's all erased. Everything that was on the last last job I cut is gone. Close this file. So on the back, we got our uh, keyhole toolpath, save toolpaths, save toolpath. And we want to make sure we're on the same. This uh, clip at E is my USB. Save the toolpath. We're going to go back to the top now. Here we have all these. We can group a bunch of these together. But we're going to rename these, make it a little easier. So now we have a pocket clear, it's a half inch in mail. Right click, rename. 0.5 EM. I know what, sorry, EM. I know what it means. Oh, what the heck did I do here? E M. Okay. Next tool is a, a ball nose 0.5. Rename. So we're going to go 0.5 PM. The display on the, uh, the pennant is very small. It's hard to see so these flutes are both as this they're 0.5 ball noses so we'll call them all 0.5 ball nose oops sorry bn not BM. Point five BN. Now we have our one eighth tool here for our clearance. We name it. We'll go one eighth. 
10 mil EM or 60 degree um, V tool, 60 V. Then our profile is again, it's a 1 8 end mill. So we'll rename this. One eighth, or we're going to put cut because we know we're cutting it out. So now we're going to go save our tool paths, our half inch end mill, save it. Everybody, you might have a different plan, different idea, whatever works for you. This is what I do. Now we're going to select all of these half inch ball nose tool paths at one time because they can all cut at once and it'll be fine. So we can save all three of these tasks under one step on our machine. One tool. Deselect them. Select our 1 8 end mill for our clear out of our turkey. Save it. 1 8 end mill. Our 60 degree V carve tool. 60 V. And our 1 8 end mill to cut out our profile. Save tool path. And we're good to go. Tomorrow we can uh, go out. I'll leave these uh, panels set overnight so the glue can set up. And we'll cut these out on the CNC. And uh, I'll show you how I glue. And quite successfully, I've done several inlays and they look good. And I hope this helps. So we'll see you tomorrow and we'll uh, mill this out. Last night I laid out a couple of, uh, or I laid out a cutting board, a turkey cutting board, and saved it on the, uh, the uh, USB here. I got my center mark, but I'll, I'll center this. And then we'll uh, we'll cut the keyhole and we'll turn it over and we'll get to uh, cutting on the uh, cutting board itself. zero and we're just going to uh, set the Z zero all right we're going to bring it down slowly and it's just about touching so we'll Z zero right there we can touch off with the touch off tool or man and when I save the uh, all the uh, tool paths to the uh, the disc I renamed them all and I'm on a Laguna IQ that said rich auto is their control anybody with a rich auto whether it be a home built unit or any other unit if it's a rich auto it's the same thing you save your your uh, uh, your tool pass to either the USB or you can plug it directly into the computer I just use the USB put it in my pocket take it in deal with it so we're going to raise uh, that next in here. Raise our uh, bed a little bit. We're going to go into U drive because I didn't save it to the internal file. And we're going to go to the keyhole and we're going to cut the keyhole on the back and then we'll flip this horizontal and then we'll get to uh, cutting up the key, uh, cutting up the uh, the cutting board and. Uh, and then later on we'll cut in, cut out the inlay. So we're gonna hit OK twice.
hang it out of the way in a pantry, display it, whatever they like. They have a keyhole. They may use it, they may not. It only takes a second. So I will uh, flip this over and then we'll get started on the uh, front side. We got our board turned over. I went ahead and milled out uh, the half inch mill end portion of this because it's so noisy I didn't want to record that. We're ready to set up the half inch ball nose here. And then we'll cut the flutes and uh, finish off our little trough here. Now we're ready to start the V-carve. As I mentioned, there's a little bit of a trick to make this clean up easier. I'm going to run this through a thickness planer when it's done. I'm going to take off all the excess in it. I'm going to take a little bit of the surface off as well. I already know that because it's inevitable it's going to happen. So we're going to zero this off. Okay, so we're touched off at zero. Our 60 degree V bit is zero to the surface. We're going to take it back off of the uh, wood. We're going to bring our Z down to zero. This is in millimeters here. Now we're at the surface of the wood. We know we're going to take a little off here with our planer. So we're going to go down one millimeter. We're going to re-zero. What that will do is cut our inlay recess a little deeper. When we put our inlay on, in, glue it, and plane it, we'll have a perfect inlay every time. We'll go to scroll down here to 60 degree V, v, uh, v bit. Hit OK. And we're off.
Okay, just finished the uh, morning clearance tool path. I'll get this out of the way. And I'll come in here with a dust collector.
we're going to get it in all the grooves here. And, um, I don't want to be too shy because it'll get all get cleaned off, you know, in the excess. We want to get all of the uh, recessed images, image portions, glued up. There we have it. Pretty successful. Uh, now I will, uh, I've got this mini router. I found this little mini uh, router bit in my Dremel set. I'm going to round off the edges, top bottom. Sand it down, you've got the Oracle sander. Take her down to, uh, I'd say about 150. Then we're going to take, wet it down, get a good damp rag or cloth, wet them down, and uh, raise the grain. Let it dry out completely again, then sand it down to 220, 320, something in that area. We're ready for some finish. So, uh, yeah, when they're all done, I'll add a couple of photos of the finished product.